Joe, it is astonishing to think that only 4% of all that exists are the things that we think is everything that exists uh, in terms of all matter and energy that we know and that uh, uh, another and, and that more than 95 percent is dark stuff maybe two-thirds of which is suppo- so-called dark energy and and then the other piece is, is dark matter and so that of all the matter in the universe dark matter and the matter we see uh, what's the, the ratio? It would be something like a, a 4 over 29 or 30, that kind of fraction. So a little more than 10, 15% of the matter in the universe is what we can see. So what's all this dark matter? Okay, so we, I must say that we're getting slightly desperate in the search for dark matter, <laughs> yeah. in the sense that we've been looking intensively now for decades and found nothing. The, the, the problem, though, is that we have a prejudice that the dark matter should be a typical a massive particle, maybe uh, weighing hundreds of times the proton mass, being very weak, interacting. So we've devised, me- de- devised many experiments to look for these. Um, deep underground by their scattering, um, looking deep into space in to towards dark galaxies, dark dwarfs, where we think these particles may bounce off each other and annihilate and give you gamma rays, things like that. We found nothing at all. We even have looked in colliders, like the Large Hadron Collider, to see evidence of dark matter particles being produced by their absence. Um, When you see other things moving away, nothing, nothing at all. So my view is we should be looking somewhere else. And I have um, a slightly more um, exotic place I would like to look for and um, that is primordial black holes, which might be typically um, the mass of stars. Um, Why they've been postulated for a very long time. In fact, they're an outcome of um, many theories of the beginning of the universe, inflation. You can have weird features in inflation which can dial in primordial black holes. And the amazing thing is, if they're produced early in the universe, because um, they act like ordinary matter, the early universe is full of radiation, the universe expands, Mm -hmm. um, and they only dominate at very late times. So uh, they're incredibly rare early on, if they're made Mm -hmm. at all, and they can have a huge impact at late times, because they don't decay away like the radiation does. So that's exciting. And so they've been around for a while. I mean, Stephen Hawking was one of the initial propounders of primordial black holes. In his case, they were well, evaporating. Describe yeah. what, what, what the, the, the approximate size. It's the one solar mass, so oh, how big would, would that be? Okay, so you name it. I mean, the size of Mount Everest, the mass of Mount Everest is the smallest one that actually survives, okay? okay. Um, Hawking's version were Planck mass, million gram ones that evaporate instantaneously. Oh. Okay, so all, they're all possibilities, but it's the ones that survive that could be the dark matter. So think of Mount Everest on upwards to solar masses to thousands of solar masses. Oh. They could be part of it, they couldn't be all the dark matter, at least any one mass couldn't. Collectively, they could be the dark matter. And so the question is, if so, why are we suddenly thinking about this now? The the LIGO experiment in 2016 discovered gravity waves from unexpectedly the mergers of rather massive black holes, um, 30 solar masses or thereabouts. This is unexpected because the theorist up to that time had made predictions of somewhat smaller ones from normal astrophysical processes. So this launched um, uh, various groups to say, well, maybe these are the long sought after primordial black holes that have clustered and merged together just, um, you know, within hundreds of millions of light years of us. We could be seeing their evidence. Uh, And the numbers more or less add up. Now, this is an extreme hypothesis. But this caused a whole revival in the notion of primordial black holes as dark matter sources. So I would say it's an interesting candidate, you know, um, that we've overlooked completely in the past. And now we have all sorts of predictions. For example, LIGO, when it keeps on observing, if they really are the dark matter, one should see more More and more of them at higher and higher masses, because there's nothing to limit them at 30 solar masses which is probably where stars cannot make more massive black holes. Mm-hmm. So we have natural predictions that they should be there in the early universe, they should leave their imprint on microwave background, maybe at some low level. So it's exciting now. Mm-hmm. We're looking for them in a totally different way. Yeah, so w- w- what is the um, implication in terms of the importance of, of uh, uh, dark matter? Is, is it absolutely essential for the structure of the universe as it is today, however it's caused. There are so many ways that we see the presence, infer the presence of dark matter. We can't see it directly, of course, but it holds galaxies together, 
it holds clusters together, it holds, you know, the clouds in intergalactic space together, etc. So it, there's no, no one has yet come up with any alternative. You know, some people say, well, maybe gravity's wrong, Einstein's wrong, but there's been no successful explanation that does without dark matter to date. So I think it's the best theory you have, and we have to find it if we uh, either stay sane <laughs> as cosmologists, <laughs> I would say.